Anytime you're ready, Mr. Mitchell. <clears throat> Greetings, everybody. Several months ago, Tomas Pettick alerted me that to get ready to be on YouTube, and I started with a wardrobe and uh, bought the finest uh, $25 suit that uh, Goodwill had, and uh, had a tie that was given me by a former student, and uh, then I started to uh, work on diction and I studied how to win friends and influence people and so I hope that uh, I'm going to be qualified now to uh, appear to a good advantage on, uh, on uh, uh, YouTube. I started uh, at the age of four uh, as a piano student and uh, it was not uh, voluntary, I assure you, it was my mother's idea and she was an extremist and uh, they wanted to just sit down and practice there. She went to the lesson, I was at a piano teacher at four and she wrote down every word that the teacher said and then she sat down with me to practice an hour a day. They call it child abuse nowadays, but in those days uh, they didn't have the welfare laws, I guess. And uh, so I'm certainly glad that she did, but it was not my idea. So she said, go out in the orchard and get a little twig, take the leaves off. I had bare legs, and if I gave her a bad time, which I usually did, I, she'd switch my legs. But I must say that unlike a mother with, who might be alcoholic or have a violent temper, uh, every time that she uh, punished me, I never resented it because I knew I deserved it. So we had no problem on that score. Uh, in my childhood, there were no electronic organs, and the only pipe organs were in churches and synagogues, theaters, and millionaires' homes. And practicing was not allowed as a general practice. And people that wanted to learn the organ usually had to be college graduates on piano. And you could transfer the fingering and the musical terms and the interpretation and the history of music uh, from the piano to the organ and then you could concentrate on the pedals and on picking up the stops and also on playing what's called legato uh, smoothly. On the piano you can take your hand off the key and hold the tone with your foot on a pedal but on the organ it's like a doorbell. If you take your hand off a key it stops playing. So there's a particular technique in the organ. We often have to change the fingers on the same note to hold it down uh, so that it will stay down as long as we need to hear it and it won't uh, come off. And uh, usually uh, an hour a week is about all you could get. You'd find a, an organist that had a concession to give maybe have five hours and so you get one hour a week to take a lesson and learn. And uh, so in the little village that we lived, there was only one pipe organ, and that was in the Episcopal Church. And so my mother, when I was so advanced in the piano since four years old, when I was 10, I was tall for my age, and I could reach the pedals. So. My mother was very religious and she decided that she'd like to have me learn the organ. So I sort of uh, dreaded it because I knew I'd meet another hour of practice. And uh, some of the ladies in the village said, Oh, Robert, don't uh, have your mother touch with organ because that might spoil your piano touch. And both of them had friends that had played piano, and uh, when they played only organ, they lost their piano touch. It is true, you have to have a lot of more. A lot more muscle and strength to play a piano because the organ, it doesn't matter how hard you hit it or how softly you touch it, it never is any, it makes no difference. So I told my mother, I, I love the piano, I don't want to spoil it. I thought I had her convinced. She goes, Is that so? I didn't know I would spoil your piano. Well, now you're going to go take organ lessons. So she went down to the Episcopal Church and uh, she asked the rector 
they called the pastor of an Episcopal church the rector, and he was a rather stuffy Canadian, Dean Shaw, and uh, he used to say, when I was Dean of Lord's Cathedral, they'd go up and down on his heels in the pulpit, and in a little village everybody knows everybody's business, and the neighbor said he was never a dean of a cathedral. Uh, the dean was given a wealthy uh, members of the church gave him a trip to Israel uh, where he could uh, visit uh, the Holy Land and uh, while they were away he substituted for them but at any rate he retained the title Dean Shaw and uh, so my mother wanted to know if I could practice on the organ he said no 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 one can play the organ but our organist so my mother told him what she thought about a man with a cloth that wouldn't allow a child to learn the instrument used to praise Almighty God. Oh, she could be dramatic. <laughs> he said, well, he'd make an exception in my case without setting a precedent. But he said, uh, I would have to study with their organist. Well, Mother's bubble was broken because she didn't have much respect for the, the local town in the village. She had dreams about studying with Ernest Douglas, considered the finest organ teacher in Southern California at the time. And uh, so, at any rate, everything worked to my advantage. Uh, that seems to be my life. I, I have no plans, and just uh, the things that look bad work out to my advantage. So the girl, Frances Webster, was the organist, and I, I, I was afraid of her, which was a big advantage. She had her hair pulled up in a knot on the back of her head, pencil behind her ear, and uh, so I played a note with my foot, and uh, was wrong and I looked at her, don't look at your feet! And that scared me so much that to this day I'm afraid to look at my feet. And that's a big, big advantage when I'm playing for a movie or I'm directing a choir, I can't look down on my feet. Uh, Any more than when you're driving a car, you can't look down the clutch and the brake. You have to keep your eye on the road. And uh, at any rate, uh, I played, uh, studied with her until she got married. And my first job, it wasn't professional because uh, I wasn't paid, but I played for her wedding, and then she retired, and Mother had her dream come true, and I studied with Ernest Douglas. So he took me up to his church, St. Matthias Episcopal Church, used to be at the corner of Washington and Normandy, and no, nothing there now, but they had to make a jog in the road for the freeway, but uh, he, I hit a wrong note, and he said, well, look down at your feet. I said, oh, I wouldn't do that, so actually, uh, I had better luck studying with the village organist than if I had never had that experience. So that was uh, uh, a wonderful uh, happening for me. And then uh, Mr. Uh, Douglas had a boys and men's choir. And my mother said, it's not enough for you to take lessons from him. You must go and listen to him play and see how he performed. So every Sunday she drives 17 miles, a little Maxwell car, <laughs> and the little tires always we could sit, expect a blowout, either going or coming. And uh, so uh, he used to rehearse the men and boys choir before the service, and then he'd go down and then they'd, uh, he'd play the organ, and then the choir would walk in singing. So uh, it's... Uh, I always went in and listened to the rehearsal and then uh, uh, watched the service. So one Sunday in the summer, he had, he had uh, only a few boys. He said, put on a robe and, uh, and sing with the boys. Well, I'd love to sing. We used to have photograph records of Gali Kurchi and uh, Alma Gook and uh, Joni and Farrar. I couldn't understand their words, but uh, I'd make up words for the Italian or the French or German. and. Uh, I love to sing, imitate those opera singers, but <coughs> I mean, when uh, when he said uh, sing with the boys, I said, "Oh, I can't sing. I was uh, shy." He said, "Well, put a robe and fill up space." So anyway, I went in and I started singing you know, a little bit with the boys. And they were street kids, hard boiled, marvelous singers. They got fifty cents a week for. Thursday afternoon rehearsal, Friday night rehearsal with the men, and two services on Sunday morning and evening. 
They didn't pay any attention to me. They sang magnificently. So I got more bold and I sang up with them. <coughs> Pardon me. And I got, uh, because I'd had so much music, I saw how he trained the boys. This was the days before radio, and uh, they had, the news would come in uh, headlines. There would be always a special edition, and the newsboys would be in the street and say, read all about it in the paper. So their voices were all the chest tone. In order to get them up to high C and all that, why, uh, then he had a special technique. I'll stop.